they show up out of nowhere and they're like, hey, Geary, <laughs> come, come to our star system. It's fun. Come check it out. We got a resort. We'll take one third of your crew yes. and then everything could be fine, I'm sure. Preferably in a residential area to be played at high volume. Admiral Geary takes his fleet on a leisurely stroll through space as he lazily fights off a small collection of Enigma ships. The real danger comes from within as Admiral Geary is nearly assassinated several times. He wonders who might want to kill him and asks nearly everyone for advice. While going through an endless loop of hypothesis and counter hypothesis, he blindly follows yet another alien race to their star system. The real battle for the future of the fleet begins and all the action will take place off screen. <laughs> just to set the tone for this book, our, our head spaces, we began our friendship with this series, right? The original yeah, series. We read it. Fleet. The Lost Fleet. It was awesome. It was all about space combat. There was a lot of action throughout the whole thing. We loved it. So this is the second book in the third set called uh, The Lost Fleet Outlands. We read the first one. I didn't really like the first one because I felt like it didn't give us a lot of action, number one. And it was a lot of like political intrigue that didn't really pull off very well. But now the Admiral's in space and his job is to get the people to this dancer controlled space, which is like a new alien race. But my God, it is so boring. <laughs> it is deathly boring. I think we get, so I read this for space combat. The first space combat comes 130 pages into the novel. That tells you that almost nothing is happening. And it lasts like maybe, I don't know, four pages? Yeah, a few pages, right? And because yeah. we know Geary is so good at his job, there's not really a lot of tension on will he win this battle. We just mm. know he's going to win it. The only tension was, was he going to lose any ships or any people? Yeah, it wasn't win or yeah. lose. It was like how many ships he was going to lose when he wins. Yeah. But even that, it would have been political, right? Because he's yeah. leading a fleet of, there's people from the Alliance, the Rift Federation. There's the so free many people of... Yeah, way. there's so many different yeah. things going on, which yeah. in the first series, which I'm going to reference a lot because I really like that series. <laughs> in the first series, it was like action right off the bat mm -hmm. and then action all throughout because he's always fighting his way out of every kind of star system. There's a lot yeah. of people in star systems, but it was okay because we were just shooting everybody, right? Yeah. And that but was... in this one, we're not really shooting anybody. So we have to like <laughs> learn like what their political affiliation is and why it's important That's to one true. another. Yeah, I would remember battles go on for like chapters, right? Yeah. Between the Alliance and the, the Syndicate and bombardments of worlds and even world invasions and battles with the Marines, battles in space. Battles in space, battles on yeah. planets, bombarding planets. You're right. Like there was so much interesting things going on where in this mm -hmm. one, he's worried that he's going to be assassinated and he was... <laughs> Uh, was an attempted assassination attempt twice at least, I think? No, it was a lot. Multiple times, right? And <laughs> that's where most of this intrigue yeah. comes in is like, who wants to kill him? There's somebody in the fleet. And then we just go on an endless loop of like, somebody in the fleet wants to kill yeah. him. And who is it? Somebody in the fleet wants to kill him. Who is it? Somebody in the fleet. Who is it? Just <laughs> over and over again. And I was just like, oh yeah. dear God, please make it end. There was a lot. Is it you? Is it you? Is it you? Is it you? No, I knew it wasn't you. I trust you. Is yeah, you? I trust you. No, okay. <laughs> I it might be dude. you, but you're still cool. <laughs> Uh, there was a lot of finger pointing, a lot of watch his back while well, he watches her back. She's going to watch you and they're going to watch her and a lot of tricks. I, I guess that's one thing I liked about it. You know how they say keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. So he was doing that a lot and throwing out little like bait, I guess. Like misinformation. Yeah, misinformation. Is, oh, they, they're going to see that I'm falling for this. So they push harder. I know it's not from this group. It's yeah. some other group from this ship. So that was interesting to me because I guess that's more of a... Like, uh, what do you call those detective kind of thriller yeah. books? Mystery, like solving yeah. a mystery, whodunit type mystery yeah. thriller. Mm -hmm. But minus the thriller, like this is not interesting. It's just like <laughs> dry military operations yeah. trying to solve a crime that they can't even solve. Like, spoiler alert, <laughs> we're getting to the point where we're going to spoil this. Like, Geary doesn't even solve the problem. Remember, again, I'm not going to give it too much away, but somebody just comes forward out of the blue and it's like I'm part of the plot to murder you and he's like oh thanks for coming forward because I had no idea how to solve this <laughs> it just seemed like everyone was kind of half-heartedly trying to find who it was right yeah like oh we'll find we're right now what you do yesterday how's your day going <laughs> like, oh, oh yeah what do you think there? about them aliens dude those aliens are crazy did you also try to find that guy that tried to kill me? Oh. No? All right. But them aliens are crazy. <laughs> like, that's, it's just back and forth. The whole book, right? The whole book was like that. Being Talking bad. about aliens, 
what they thought about aliens, and then who wants to kill Gary. And then mm -hmm. the connect, like underneath all of that, to spice things up, I guess, the author introduces like some spirituality aspects. Well, that was kind of in all the books. He would always go into like the little booth to pray to his ancestors. Yeah. But this one, I would say he depended more on it, right? He leaned more on yeah. it. It seems like he's maybe an older guy now and he's looking back on his life and he's leaning more on spirituality because he's lost so much, maybe? And he's over a lot of crap. But, I don't think he cares as yeah. much. <laughs> it just seems like superfluous is the word, I believe. It's just <laughs> like, it's, it's not needed yeah. in this military <laughs> combat book, which I guess, I'm gonna guess that this is not about military combat anymore. It's no. it's starting to go more towards like Star Trek, where it's more about space exploration rather than space combat. Because yeah. again, we get like maybe two major battles, right? There's like one in the middle and then there's one in the end. It's not even major because we know mm -hmm. Geary is gonna save the day. Yeah, two major battles, a potential battle, maybe a future battle, an internal battle. See, potential, <laughs> future, like it's all things like over there yeah. that's maybe possibly gonna happen and let's talk about it for 200 pages. Yeah, and even the major battle was just done to get away. Yeah, they were just trying to escape. He wasn't even trying to fight. He was like, yeah. I just want to get away. People are forcing him into the situation. Yeah, and I don't want to kill him too much because they right. might still want to be friends. They might get super <laughs> angry. Yeah, because personally I thought it was going to be cool. The Lost Fleet and everything up to this point was humans fighting humans. Outer yeah. worlds, inner planets, whatever. And strategy. Strategy, strategy. was inserted in every single stage. Just like the tactical and everything in dealing with space warfare was on it. Now they met aliens though, so I was like, oh that's awesome, they're gonna fight this new alien race, new weapons, new tactics. New strategies. New, yeah, maybe team up with them, see how we work together with them to fight other aliens. Uh, talk more about how they look, how they fight. They didn't really... Didn't really do that. Yeah, any and that. anything that comes about like as to like why they do things or how they fight comes from Admiral Geary and the officer corps, let's call mm -hmm. it, right? Yep. And officer, or Dr. Cressetia or something like that, right? Uh, One person. But yeah. they have an entire like department of alien <laughs> experts that they bring along with them that and does experts. nothing. They yeah. do nothing. They bring nothing to the table. They solve no mysteries. Like Admiral Geary is just solving all of the mysteries. Yeah. Why even bring them? Why even bring them up in the novel if they're not going to provide any value that or is, answers? It's important though because that's politics. Yeah, I guess they so. were assigned by the government. But that's the thing though. Like <laughs> this book talks about politics, but yeah. it doesn't actually show you the politics and the interplay. The only thing that it tries to show you is that you're right. Like it inserts some like science group and then does nothing about it other than talking about yeah. how that was politically motivated. It's so dry and yeah. boring. But for the most part, they were useless because Geary and his team, they have firsthand experience, right? Talking to them, fighting with them, fighting against them, four different alien races. And here's this group of professional scientists and what do you call them? Like alien? Xenobiologists? Xenobiologists, yeah. whatever. And they were useless. Even when they tried, there's a point in the book where they tried talking to the aliens. Yeah. And the alien's response is just something simple like, sure. Yeah, because the aliens yeah. think they're like infants because yeah. you're supposed to talk to them in a certain way, which mm -hmm. Geary knows how to talk to them, but these super smart scientists don't know how. They can't yeah. figure it out. And then Dr. Casita <laughs> or Crusadia, anyways, yeah. Yeah. she figures out that you have to sing to them and yeah. that's how you communicate, which fine, but they make it seem like it's some kind of like revelation, which it's not. <laughs> they're just simply not communicating. Like they're not like the alien race, you know what I mean? Like they're not yeah. even trying until one person sings to them and then they open up but then they close back down and now we're left to wonder why yeah. anyways that dancer garbage <laughs> was just about language what really got yeah. me pissed off in this novel was the taon or ta how do you say it i, I say town but taon t-a-o-n yeah however you want to say it they show up out of nowhere and they're like, hey, Geary, come come to our star system. It's fun. Come check it out. We got a resort. We'll take one third of your crew yeah. and then everything could be fine, I'm sure. So yeah. Admiral Geary's like, hey, that is a great idea. Let me leave half my fleet here and go to this unknown star system with an unknown <laughs> alien race for unknown reasons and an unknown amount of time. Hey, but it does take enough forces to fight if they have to. So at least he's smart in that point. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What, like, why would you even go? They're well, telling you nothing. Some does have to do with the assassination attempts because he's saying maybe if we leave people behind, they'll try something and won't know yeah. it's part of that group. That's you okay. Know? And thank like you. Fail safes and something. Thank you, you know? for bringing up that. <laughs> 
that logic. Because you're right in that he leaves sort of because he wants to the assassination assassinators, plotters. Plot. Anyways, Whatever. he wants them to come out of the dark and try Assassin. something, right? So he does. Spoiler alert: If you haven't read it yet, turn off this video and then come back and watch the rest. <laughs> but he leaves. And we go with him, mm -hmm. and then a lot of boring garbage happens with the Taeon, where Admiral on. Geary is just going along with whatever they say for no good reason. Yeah. But yeah. then we come back, and then we find out the plot has been resolved. Like, they found the saboteurs, and they, you know what I mean? Like, they resolve yeah. everything is resolved. What? That was the most <laughs> interesting thing about the book. Why did it happen off screen? Yeah, all we know is that Geary left a failsafe. I guess they tripped that. The MPs, whatever, they found who tripped it, they arrested him, and that was it. Well, right, like, it was all described to us. It was, it was described yeah. to us after the fact. Dude, yeah. I have, this story made me angry, as you can yeah. tell, but this story would have been much more interesting if it was told from the saboteur's point of view, like the reluctant saboteur, uh. right? Like, Admiral Geary is Admiral Geary, but he's always in the background, and we're in the trenches of this mm -hmm. uh, plot to overthrow Geary. That yeah. would have been much more interesting because then we could have stayed with the fleet as all of this action was happening to foil true. the plot. And then we would have been following along as they tried to assassinate him. We were like, holy crap, is it going to happen? I don't know. Yeah. And then all of their yeah. assassination attempts are, are foiled every single time. They don't even work. <laughs> like, how are you smart enough to set up an, like a bomb or some kind of assassination attempt but not actually pull it off? Yeah, and one was foiled by Ensign Duck. Yeah. Well, that was an interesting part. <laughs> that was... I don't know if you want to talk about that. But... Yeah, they have a duck on board, which I forget why. The Marines brought him on board. But as punishment, they made the duck an officer, which makes the Marines <laughs> salute the duck whenever he comes quacking down the hallway. And follow him to make sure he's fed and he's well taken care of. <laughs> I, I can imagine that happening. Yeah, at first it was just funny, but hey, he played a big part. He's a yeah. hero. He saved, he saved Admiral Geary. <laughs> yeah. And if you think that's strange, you know, it's been known, World War II, World War I, there's been animals, you know, yeah. serving in the military. Dogs, uh, pigeons in World War I or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. they played big parts, and they, I think even they were assigned, right? Like, uh, Yeah, ranks. The like pigeons, I think, got like medals of honor and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, so that was definitely interesting. Yeah. Well, there were some funny parts. Uh, like one thing I wrote down right here is when they follow this new alien race, a town, whatever you want to call them, yeah. to this resort that they call it to have fun. The thing was mostly to observe the humans and so they could each figure each other out, how they are, how they act, physiology, all that. Pretty much they, it looked like they were going to get ambushed. Yeah. So they had a plan to evacuate, so they go back to their ship. Every single time, yeah. they were like, this looks dangerous, and we have no idea why we're doing it, but we're going to do, it, do anyway. it. And as they're boarding the ships, they're like, wait, give me a count. Sergeant Orvis ordered as the ramps raced and sealed. We're one short. Where's Francis? Oh, yeah, we got him. He got on the wrong bird. Sergeant Barnwell. He's like, Francis, you idiot. <laughs> that was like a comic relief. And every, everything is fine and safe, so they all just leave the planet. I, I yeah. loved the comic relief in this book. Like those were like the highlights because everything else was so dry. And a lot of it had to do with the Marines, right? They were yeah. always getting into something. It was, it was funny. And then there was another point that I just did not agree with as well is like Admiral Geary is starting to, I don't know if he's starting or always has, doesn't have any confidence in his leadership ability, which I felt is not true for an admiral in command of so many fleets and ships for so long. Like, he should have confidence in his abilities. Like, maybe yeah. if he was a lieutenant or a captain, you can be like, oh, I don't know if I can do this. But dude, you're an admiral. You've been through many battles. You're going to be okay. So this whole line of like, he's not sure if he can lead is just, or he doesn't have any confidence is, I'm not buying it. Yeah, but he's still, I don't know why. Doubting himself. Yeah. Like, come on, dude. You stopped like a huge war that went on for centuries. You beat everyone. You beat everything. You're beating aliens. Like, and you're still, I don't know. You're still doubting yourself. And then yeah. even, and then what's his wife's name? Oh, Captain Disjani. Disjani. So even Disjani randomly yeah. out of the blue is like, hey, Admiral, I know why you're sad because of, <laughs> like on this anniversary date, which is today, you lost a bunch of ships out of nowhere. How do you know that? The man was just commanding ships on the fucking command deck. Yeah. And then they walk off, and then Johnny's like, you're sad. <laughs> what? 
How do you know? And then he's like, yeah, I'm definitely sad. You didn't give me anything to suspect this. You just told me randomly. So there's a lot of crap that's just randomly brought up and waste of time. Yeah. Like there's a mention of a star system that changed its name. And we're like three paragraphs in about a star system that changed its name and it never comes up again. Even, even, the, even the author knows this book has nothing going on because literally <laughs> at one point he stops and says to the reader, like, finally something's happening. Yes, finally. Even the author knew. He was like, oh, thank God, I'll finally get into the action. I, I always try to find the good things in anything. I always try to tear it apart. <laughs> Is how he's, like, everyone's not working together because he has, like, two syndicates who were, like, the biggest enemies and one of the reasons why they try to assassinate him. But those two seem to be the best you know, help he's got on his whole book. They have intel, they have experience, they're blunt with him. They, they don't hold anything so back. So he goes, Admiral Geary yeah. takes them to that Taeon alien star system, mm -hmm. goes down to that resort, and then sends those people down there because he's like, oh, you worked with the syndicates that backstab a lot of people, so you'll know what to look for. <laughs> what? This is an alien race that you know nothing about. How yeah. would they even know what their kind of tricks are like? Body language. Oh, Universal. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> this novel drove me insane. I am passionate about this book because I love the initial series. I thought I was going to like this one. I thought I was going to like the previous one, which I didn't. I am officially not going to read book three. I will. Because I'm just not going to waste my time with it. I think the author is going in a different direction now. I don't think he's like lost his edge. I think he's just decided yeah. to go in a different direction, which I'm not on board with. So let me know in the comments if you are going to read book three, if I'm wrong about book two, <laughs> if Abel's right about book two, if he should even waste his time with book three. Let us yeah. know. Or maybe it's a build up to something great to come. I think you're right. I think it's a build up, but I'm not going to wait like three more books yeah. for it to build up. <laughs>